The J. Paul Getty Museum's collection of outdoor sculpture provides visitors with a chance to explore modern works of art. The collection needs regular maintenance, and when the condition requires it, some sculptures receive an in-depth conservation treatment, such as Figure for Landscape by Barbara Hepworth. To get the project started, the 1,700-pound sculpture was deinstalled and first brought to the Decorative Arts and Sculpture Conservation Lab. The conservators could then assess the condition. When we acquired the sculpture in 2005, it was in really good condition. It already had protective coatings on the surface. By 2014, despite regular maintenance, the surface had become mottled with black and green colors. There are also various coatings that were failing, and this led to corrosion. The sculpture needed recoating. To develop the best treatment approach, conservators learned more about the artist's materials and techniques, original appearance of the sculpture, and the previous treatment history. We like to do technical studies of the collection when we can, um, especially prior to a treatment so that we can understand the materials that we're working with. When the Hepworth came into the lab, we did start uh, an extensive technical study. Barbara Hepworth is one of the most notable modern British sculptors. She worked primarily in marble, wood, and stone, but in about 1956, she began working in bronze. One of those early bronzes was figure for a landscape. There's seven throughout the world. The Getty owns the seventh cast. The seventh cast is actually behind me right now. Hepworth's method of carving and shaping plaster forms, textures later cast into bronze, is well documented. These textures and marks of her working technique are evident on the surface of figure for landscape. A visual examination of the seventh edition established that the piece had been sand cast, but other forms of analysis were needed to determine the structure and composition. Inductively coupled plasma spectroscopy and X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy was used to determine the alloys, which was a quaternary bronze. X-rays confirmed that the piece was cast in two vertical halves and then attached with both mechanical and hot metal joints. Hepworth was very interested in toning her bronzes. She was very active at the foundry and uh, had a, a range of colors that, that the foundry would use using chemical patination. We did have the question when the Hepworth came into the lab as to whether or not there were some intentional patination um, that differed from the inside and the outside of the sculpture. The analysis of the patina to help determine the original color was difficult since many chemical patination products change with exposure and they are similar to corrosion products. When we begin a treatment like the one for Hepworth where we have to recoat an outdoor bronze, there are three things that we have to question. One is what is the coating on the surface? Two is how are we going to remove it? And three, what are we going to use to recoat it? Analyzing the coatings and how they were layered would help conservators develop the best removal methods. Many samples and cross-sections of the surface were therefore taken and analyzed using optical microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, X-ray diffraction, and Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy. Well, we found several coatings. The uppermost coating appears to be wax. The ones that we found primarily uh, are uh, ones that do have ester carbonyl functional groups uh, in the wax. That could be inherent in the original wax that was used or sometimes uh, due to photooxidative changes to the wax. After the wax layers, uh, we begin to see more of the acrylic uh, or, uh, I guess, incrolac. Sometimes the incrolac is um, pure. Uh, Sometimes it's intermixed with the wax. Uh, it's hard to say whether that was intentionally done. The original appearance is something I think that will be continued to be researched. The treatment dry ice or CO2 blasting was used since it was the most effective way of removing the top wax layers. Using dry ice as a blasting media, the coating can easily be removed with thermal shock and also kinetic energy. Remaining layers, uh, which in this case were an aged incrolac and some wax sublayers, were removed with solvent. Having looked at the performance of the Incrilac on that particular piece, we were also able to confidently say that we can recoat it again with Incrilac. And the way that we did that is by spray applying uh, the coating overall. Once the coating was applied, 
We then waited about a week because we wanted it to completely um, dry and we coated the sculpture with the wax. The treatment and study took nearly a year to complete and as a result the appearance and stability of the sculpture greatly improved. Before treatment, the coatings darkened the surface and areas of failed coatings led to corrosion. After treatment, the green patina became more vibrant and colorful, and the surface is now protected. With regular maintenance and monitoring, we hope that the new coatings will last up to 10 years. After treatment, the sculpture was then reinstalled in its original location on the Fran and Raystark Terrace.